Hello. Hi. Hi, Timothy. Hi. Hi. I'm Daniel. Here we are, Timothy and Daniel. We are members of the Cyclot group. It is an open source group of the closure language community. The Cyclot group cares about uh, learning and growth and data analysis and science and data visualization and exploration. And today we'll have a very brief session that will get you started with relevant tooling and workflows for analyzing data in Clojure. And we will not assume that you know much about the Clojure language this time. So you can follow most of it. And don't worry if you don't know the language, you are very much invited to our workshops and conferences where we will be teaching more of it. And oh, yeah, maybe speaking we... of which, Daniel, oh. I saw on your blog uh, about the upcoming workshop Oh, yeah. um, that that people can sign up and join it. And I was wondering, do I need to do anything to prepare my system for it or anything? Yeah, that's perfect. So actually this video is exactly what you need. Just making sure this video is working in your system is a good advice for anybody who wishes to join this workshop in May 10th. And yeah, this workshop is intended for people who are new to Clojure. So you're very much invited to... Uh, to join us there. And could you go to the main page back? Maybe we'll mention another thing and that's the conference. So you go can go to this link. Yeah, so this is the main page for our conference in May, a data analysis conference by the Cycloj community, all about data analysis stories and background talks about math and statistics and so on, all in mm. closure. Yeah. Um, it sounds really interesting. I saw there was like some pictures of the presenters, but I don't see them here. How do I find out oh, who's yeah. presenting? Yeah, you can kind of navigate and see the speakers. Oh, here they are. Right. And you can also see uh, the other page of the amazing list of our hosts who will be hosting the conference. Really a great team who will be doing that. So I, yeah, I'm really glad. Yeah, you can, under people, you can see the list of hosts and and... And oh, that's nice. Yeah, thank you for looking into that. And um, I'm I'm really glad by the, you know, really big efforts by many of the people involved. And I'm glad we are ma actually making it. Um, yeah, so should we should we practice some closure? And, um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, maybe that's good to look into this uh, tab you have of Closure installation. We will assume that anybody watching this video will have Closure installed in the system. Gotcha. I think I've already done that, so I'll just yeah, make sure. Uh... Yeah, that's great. Sometimes it takes a moment for it to load the first time, you know, bringing things from the web, but here it is already running. Hmm. Great. So we should, uh, you know, bring this project, a Closure project we've prepared that no, we can practice. Oh, yeah. is this what you're using for the workshop? No, no, that's just a small demo. Yeah, but if you, you see you in this uh, readme file, you have some video uh, discussion of this, uh, which is slower and longer than this video. It's oh, just I a brief it. data analysis tutorial we made a couple of months ago. But now we just use this project as an example. So we can, you know, just practice the tooling we have and yeah so that's great we're assuming that anybody following this has some knowledge of git so you can you know git clone the repo as timothy is doing and here we, we see the files under this it is mostly a little bit of closure code and the document rendered the actual notebook rendered from the code we'll see what it is about in a moment yeah mm. What should I do now? <laughs> yeah, can we open this in an editor? You know, which for editor open, do you recommend? There are a few great ones, and you know, really a few IDEs and editors for Clojure. This session will be about Visual Studio Code, which is a rather mainstream okay. choice, and yeah, so that's Visual Studio Code, which is probably familiar to many people programming, and and yeah, one thing we can do is. 
Oh, open. we just open open the directory, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just open the folder of. Uh, maybe it should be open folder. I'm wondering. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, it seems to work. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we will need one little thing, and that is to make sure we have the VS Code extensions for Clojure. Okay. Uh, extensions, which are like so-called plugins, right? So you can open the command panel, which is, you know, show all commands. Here we see. Oh, I see. Shift Alt P or sh oh, that's command. Shift Command P. Yep. Yeah. And here we can install extensions, right? Yeah. That's oh, great. it's, yep. Great. Okay. And, and what should I search for? And at the bottom left, you see the recommended extensions, which are the recommended one for this project. Interesting. Calva and Calva Power Tools. Calva. And yeah. let's call them both, I guess. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of Calva before, but this Calva Power Tools looks new. Yeah. yeah, that's funny that you're saying that because, of course, of course, Timothy is very much involved in creating this <laughs> new Calva Power Tools extension. In collaboration with Peter Stromberg, our friend, amazing friend Peter Stromberg, who is the maintainer or one of the maintainers of the Calva extension. Yeah, so Calva Power Tools adds to the main Calva extension in allowing some tools involved. And for today, what we care about is Clay, which is a data visualization tool for notebooking. We will see it in action in a moment, but now we have all we need. We can just, oh, you know. Oh, cool. So yeah. I noticed that it, it jacked in on its own already and there's a nil here. So it seems like something's working already. Yeah. Is that's that good? Great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do we want to do now? Can we open some code or something? Yeah. Could you open the, the tree view of the files, like the uh, file explorer? So... Yeah. I'll open my command palette and look for a file explorer. Yeah, focus on, f yeah. That's oh, there we go, okay. Right, yeah, so maybe one thing we can see here is the depths.eden file, which is, you know, a usual oh, way nice. to create a closure project. And here this closure project has one dependency, which is Nodge, Nodge is just the data science toolkit for closure. So that's a simple project. And you see the notebooks directory. Mm -hmm. And there we have this index.clj. .clj, just a closure file. And that's a common practice in closure that we use a closure file as a notebook for data analysis. And yeah, can we just go to the, the first you know, first paragraph, first form, as they call it, and see that we can evaluate it. It is Alt Enter uh, to evaluate. Oh, uh, okay. I press Alt Enter. Yeah. And it may take a moment to evaluate because it brings the relevant, you know, uh, relevant functions for the first time. It is like an import in other languages. Uh, this require of at the beginning of the page. So it requires a few things. And after Timothy clicked one once, Alt Enter, it should, after a few moments, load. And you see it did load. And nil means that's OK. That's, you know, means that this first form in the beginning of the file is has been loaded. Nil so, is my favorite value, Daniel. Oh, really? <laughs> so I'll try this one as well. Let's see what oh. happens. Maybe it'll produce something different. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. So we read in some data, I guess. And yeah. uh, okay, cool. And maybe maybe what you can demonstrate now is how we take this whole file and render it as a notebook. Uh, sure. What's the, what do I do? Yeah. So in the command panel, again, the command shift B, you can type clay which is our notebook tool you can type clay make file and this will make the whole file as a document that we'll see telling the story of this data analysis what this, mm. this document is about oh yeah and you have these key bindings right so you can also practice the key bindings if that 
something you like. And yeah, and yeah, this file is just a little data analysis. The data we're analyzing is the data of, you know, community events like meetup events and dates and so on. So it is a time series analysis. And at the bottom, we can see this uh, uh, colorful plot of different meetup groups and the way they have been growing basically mm. throughout the years. And that's what this page is about. And, you know, since we have made a video about that in the past, so we will not, you know, go through all of it. We'll just use it to get a little taste of our tooling. Yeah. I want to experiment a little bit more with this visualization oh, yeah. on the right. So I'm going to just ignore your code for the moment and yeah. make an SVG because I like SVGs. <laughs> uh, you know, what's SVG, Timothy? SVG, scalable vector graphics. You know what SVG is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I like circles, so we'll start with a mm -hmm. circle. And see, I think the key command was uh, control shift space AA. Oh, okay, so I can just look, make one circle and maybe change the color. So uh, what, how did you do it now that you just visualized this little form? What did you do? Oh, right. Uh, so I was using the make top level form thing, which we didn't talk about yet, did we? So we used make file. Yeah. And there's also make top level form. Oh, that's great. And there's also Cordo. Maybe we should talk a little bit about Cordo. Do you want to explain what Cordo is? Yeah. Yeah. Cordo is this publishing system uh, it, which is used in you know may, many programming communities, basically turning different types of, of you know notebooks in language different languages into beautiful documents and websites and books and so on and slideshows and we have great integration uh, with Quoto that allows us to use our closure files as the source of publishing different kinds of documents with Quoto. So here for example you can make file Quoto that's good that will generate an, uh, an HTML file rendered through Quoto. So you can all, you can oh, see this nice. It looks pretty much the same to me, but yeah, the styling's so... a little bit different, I guess. Yeah, right. So- Oh, and it's got a table of contents. Interesting. Yeah, right, right. And of course, for bigger projects, we can use that to create websites and books and slideshows and all, a lot of, our documentation at the Cyclodge group is done by that. And the conference website we saw earlier is all rendered by this method we're watching now through Quoto. So it is all integrated mm. very well. Yeah, could we go back to your visualization? You were making circles and I stopped you and they were kind of- Oh, nice. we, we can. I got distracted by this graph. It's, it's a really nice graph. I love how it shows like the different communities events over time and, yeah. and it's amazing to me that the code for the graph is the plot is so small it's really compact and nice uh and yeah. it's separate from the code that's querying the data which is quite unusual in my experience a lot of these things conflate those two things so it's, this is really nice um yeah we can go back to the circle uh what did you want to do with the circle yeah can we can we just, you know, practice changing it more? I think what oh, you showed, sure. yeah, this way that you're visualizing one form, just the top level form, it allows you to kind of be very dynamic in what you do. Could we change the center maybe? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, really? Yeah. Now we need another circle. <laughs> well, we, we'll, we'll be here forever, but uh, oh, let's, yeah. let's add, a, add another circle. Uh, blue, maybe make it a little bit less big. Oh, yeah. that's the, the wrong thing. Radius 30. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, that's fun. 
So nice. Yeah, great. So yeah, I'm glad we're doing that because that's the dynamic experience. Basically, any data exploration should feel like that, I believe, you know, so dynamic, just changing little things and visualizing them. Great. So I think we did have a little taste of the closure tooling for data analysis with VS Code and Calva and Clay and Quoto. And uh, yeah, and I, I just want to say I'm so grateful to, to you, Timothy, for working on that in the last few weeks and actually in the last couple of years. And, and also in this case, we should, you know, also thank our friend Peter, who have been so friendly and helpful in making Calva friendly to us data analysts and data analysis people. Yeah, and, maybe also uh, yeah. it's important to point out Colin's been doing some really cool stuff in IntelliJ. So you can kind of oh, do the yeah. same stuff uh, yeah. or you can do exactly the same stuff. Some some of them embedded as well. So it's it's really excited, exciting to see the tool makers uh, adding these uh, visualization options into the system and uh i didn't mean to interrupt you but <laughs> thanks yeah, okay. thanks Could for you... uh thanks for uh setting up the the cyclage uh conference i'm really looking forward to to the talks there and i think the workshop's going to be really great as well so uh yeah looking forward to both of those yeah thank you so much yeah can so... people actually sign up for the workshop are you are you fully booked or are you still taking signups Oh, we still have some place. It would be good to sign up as early as possible so we just know who is coming and who is not. And and yeah, we're really looking to, forward to meet you. It will be actually two workshops. Both will be in May 10th in slightly different hours so we can cover up for different time zones. Uh, this coming conference is also trying to be friendly for people who are new to Clojure and who participate in the workshop. And also is very much around all many time zones and continents. Um, yeah. Did we have any other thing to chat about before we say goodbye? I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for this chat. Always so nice to chat with you. And so see you friends uh, on the next times and Bye. take care. Bye-bye.